Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could teach the gullible to never be so comfortable with eyes they eat like comfort food? To disregard the bogus claims and pseudo-scientific claims, can you imagine just how much indeed the world would change? No more political predators playing on the populace with ilkus and plots to shift and kill metropolis. No more villains with the title in the Bible holding phony tip providers like the stuff they teach is vital. Imagine it was normal to have to prove a claim to make. If folks really feel ashamed of pressing content that was fake, it's not to say we never make mistakes. It's just to say we go out of our way to show the evidence it takes. Remain skeptical while you travel the world or even stay strapped. We're allowed to get fast. That's what it is, yo. Yeah, keep reality intact. Yeah. Yeah. Health is true. I don't question every claim, especially the ones you believe in. Remain skeptical while you travel the world or reason. This is Paul Sheehan, and sitting next to me today is Rick Wingrove, and we want to welcome you back to Road Reason, Skeptic's Guide to the 21st Century. And today, Rick is bringing us a report from Values Voters here in Washington, D.C., but before we do that, we have some announcements. And Rick, did you have anything that you wanted to talk about with Value Voters before I jump into this? Uh, no, we'll get into it. Go ahead and do your announcements. Okay. Um, one thing I'd like to remember, uh, have the audience remember, is that uh, Road to Reason is not the only atheist program at Fairfax Public Access, nor should it be. This is community television. Uh, we're having a board meeting over here today. They're talking about the importance of public access television. And one of the things that uh, really defines public access, um, I just heard an analogy and this individual was over there saying, well, you know, I had somebody asking me, is public access like public television? Well, the difference is in public television, the public pays professionals to make television. In public access, citizens make the television, citizens like yourself. And if you're an atheist and a citizen, we encourage you to get involved here at Fairfax Public Access if you're local. And if you're not local, we would like to see you get involved in your own community. And one of the individuals I'd like to give a plug to is Eric Carmen, who has a TV show here on Thursday nights. No, excuse me, radio, radio show. show. Uh, that can also be uh, seen on a cable channel here um, and also you can listen to it live at Fairfax Public Access's live stream on their website and it's called The Nondescript Atheist. So please check out and support his show as well. As far as our news items concerned today, uh, there's really only one that I really wanted to talk about which is some victory that we had uh, recently in the United States Air Force. Uh, for our viewers uh, who have been tuning in in the past, you'll know that we were very concerned uh, with the fact that a young man was trying to re-enlist in the United States Air Force and they would not process his paperwork because he would not invoke the name of God in the process, which is actually on the paperwork. And the Air Force has now changed this policy. They, they are allowing airmen uh, and to choose not to say that in their reenlistment process, uh, which I find interesting though because it's still standardized. And that still means that this person has to out themselves as being different and separate from everyone else in, in the Air Force and potentially open themselves up to ridicule and harassment. So on one hand, I think the, the Air Force realized the futility uh, of a legal challenge if it were to go to that. On the other hand, they found a sneaky way around of keeping God still heavily nested in that particular branch. What do yeah, you think about that? Well, I, I think what's clear here is there are certain people in, in the military in positions of responsibility who are still determined to uh, in, uh, impose religion and do it with the weight of their office, the weight of their rank and impose it on people who are essentially a captive audience and uh, who are subservient to them, whose careers depend on their goodwill. So it's pretty awful. And, and I gotta say, you know, religion in the military has been an issue for a long time. I was in the Navy, uh, Vietnam era, and when I went in, you had to declare religion. There was uh, none of this, and of course, that was before I really got active, so I, I just did what they said. But uh, because I had attended a Baptist church in my youth, they had to stamp Baptist on my uh, dog tags. Now you can get non-denom or nothing, and, and maybe even atheist, I don't, I don't know. But they stamped me as a Baptist, but I went to Mormon service. You had to go to some service or face you know, some sort of punishment. And so I went to Mormon services because they were over first, and then you could you know, 
kind of have half a Sunday to yourself. So there, there's just a lot of uh, uh, um, hypocrisy about it. And I, plus, when I was in during Vietnam, a lot of guys were draftees, a lot of guys didn't want to be there, a lot of guys were there under duress, and discipline was not always 100%. And I told a lot of people when I was in that I was an atheist, and there was never, never got any pushback from that. You know, all my pushback was just because of my attitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you don't tend to give pushback to somebody who's holding a gun. But uh, <laughs> now that's like the old joke, uh, and it, to me it is a joke. Sadly, though, some people live by it, which is they say, oh, well, there's no atheists in foxhole, foxholes. And right. I can tell you straight up, that ain't true. That is absolutely not true. You're absolutely not true. does not speak for me. And uh, no, I also, of course, there, there's a whole organization, Atheists in Foxholes, which I'm a member of. And uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, maybe I should know. sign up. Maybe, maybe you should. You're ex, you're ex army. I'm ex air force. Air force. Yes. Oh, okay. And believe it or not, we actually did do grunt stuff. And yeah. It depends yeah. on what what you were doing in the air force. Right. Sure. Yeah. Well, same in the navy. I, I was in the CB, so we wore the same uniforms as the Marines, mm -hmm. and took the same. You know, we we had the. Uh, I had an M15. When I was in the uh, in the navy. M16. M16. Sorry, what did I say? 15. 15. Yeah, 16. 15. The 16, military no, version of the. Like, yeah, exactly. exactly. It was a, AR-15. It was a killing machine. It was a killing is what machine, it was. man. You were the killing it machine. It would send a 22.5 <laughs> round down the range at high velocity. And uh, yeah, but it just it reminds me though of my own Air Force experience where uh, I remember going into the Air Force and I remember on Sundays when we were in basic training that we were allowed, because you pointed out, go to church or penalty. Well, yeah. we didn't have penalty, but it was like you had to sit in the barracks quietly, you know, doing that's, nothing. That's a penalty. It's, it's kind of a penalty, it's but they won't deterrent. call it that. And then what they did is they take you down to the church, and it was, and I'm like realizing, like, and this is what's mind-boggling to me. It's like this, this church was like a cathedral on the base. It was massive. Yeah. And that's my tax dollars going to pay for this thing. Right. And they would bring this really hot, I don't mean to sound sexist, but hot chick is the only yeah. way you could describe, well, describe yeah. her in with this band. And, and like every guy on base just wanted, because she's the only girl. And of course, now the, the basic training is more co ed, but back then it wasn't. Right. But it's like the only girl you saw for months. And you were just like, oh, yeah, I want to go to church. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going to church. I'm yeah. going to church. It's like, so, you know, they make it so that you don't even think about it. They make it uncomfortable for you if you do. And there's a benefit. Yeah. you know, a reward, yeah. and it's like, that's where you, we have a really bad separation of church and state. Yeah, you know, it, when, when I was in, what you say, even though it's not really a, a, like they're flogging you or anything, it's still coercive. Yeah. It's coercive, and, and for us, it's not like they would uh, do anything physically harmful to you, but they would give you extra duty or something, coercion, oh, yeah. to get your butt in a pew of some kind, some Christian-flavored religion, on base, and uh, you know, it, it was kind of a joke at the time, but some of these commanders now, like this guy in the Air Force, is deadly serious. He has a serious intent in what he's doing, and it could not be more patently anti American and unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I think the President of the United States could fix that with a phone call, well, frankly. I, I, well, he could fix it with a phone call. The yeah. problem is he hasn't. And, yeah. and that's one of those things where uh, I hate to say it. Things change in this country when people are involved. We don't, right. you know, I, no, not, this is not directed to you, but I, I, I know a lot of people out there always want the president to champion something. That's almost appealing to a higher power. It's us who's got to get off our ass. And well, that's, that's just going to the guy who can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But uh, I know um, I'll have Kerry, uh, our technical director, pull up here in a second. We have a check as a lower third, and yes, mm -hmm. I'm going to beat the war drums once again. Try to get. I uh, see. We are an atheist TV. We show. are an atheist TV show, and, and and we know that when we put that lower third up, it generates interest. And for those that are on this side, or even if you're a, a religious believer and you think that the show provides some benefit to our community, um, here is the Fairfax Public Access. Uh, there's the address, 2929 South Eskridge Road, Fairfax, Virginia, 22031. You can make the check out. Attention to producer Paul Sheen of Road to Reason. Uh, this is a, you, you actually can request uh, this as a tax donation write-off because it is public access. And, and may I suggest, Paul, mm -hmm. uh, for the people, I, I know there are some religious people who 
appreciate, understand the, the brilliance, the, the appropriateness, the Americanness of separation of church and state. And really at the base of it all, that's largely what we're about, you know, in the organization of American Atheists, we're about separation of church and state. If you support that, and you th think we're doing that, I suggest that rather than tithing to a church, you send that money to us instead, because we're looking out for your separation of church and state, and I doubt that they are. Yep, and How's that for a plan? You know, and, you know, we're going to show a clip later on the show where you got into it with a theist, and as soon as you did, he wanted out of that conversation, and we had another theist that you debated who kept looking for ways out. We invite you to call this show if you're a theist. We want your voice heard. We are all about free speech. We're about exchange of free ideas, making change through dialogue. Uh, to me, that is the beauty of public access television and our mission. And, and America. And America. If you don't use it, you lose it. So That's get up, right. call in on this show, give us your opinion, right or wrong, let's hash it out. And send us uh, send the station a check, um, you know, uh, in our name. They get a percentage of it. We get a percentage of it. You're supporting public access TV. Uh, you're helping us grow. And in a second, we're going to go to a PSA. Then we're going to come back. We're going to have Rick here. Uh, we're going to cut to some footage, really exciting footage. I well, think. I want to show that that picture of the speakers first. You want to show the, part of the before we go to break? Oh no, you can go to the break first, then we'll come back and but fair and enough. Then. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, uh, Richard Dawkins wants to plug our show. This is Richard Dawkins. Doing commercials is unfamiliar territory for me, but I'm inviting you to watch Road to Reason, a skeptic's guide to the 21st century on Fairfax Public Access every Sunday. Each week the hosts tackle wishful thinking, religion, pseudoscience and the harm they cause with a combination of facts, humor and community involvement. They challenge believers to defend their faith and give you, the skeptic, a voice. With live call-ins for viewers and streaming on the World Wide Web, there's never a dull moment. Don't wait. Look at them now on Facebook and YouTube. And remember to watch Road to Reason, a skeptic's guide to the 21st century. Or there'll be hell to pay. <laughs> uh, that's cute. Um, Values Voter Summit. Yes. If, uh, I'm, if I may jump... Right in. You may. Values Voter Summit is an annual uh, convention mm -hmm. held usually at the Omni Shoreham Hotel here in D.C. Uh, and the participants are what I call the usual suspects. It's everybody. It's, it's the worst elements of the right are there. Uh, Carrie, can you put up that uh, picture of the uh, speakers list? That. I apologize, I realize you probably can't read that, but this was off the website, and I'll read some of the names for you. The speakers, Michelle Bachman, Gary Bauer, Glenn Beck, Jason and David Benham, who are two brothers who um, had a, uh, a show that was going to be on HGTV. Turned out that they were actively, viciously anti-gay. I saw that. Yeah. They were there. Uh, Ryan Bomberger, General William Boykin, who still runs around in uniform speaking at these things, announcing a, a, a crusade, basically. Um, U.S. Representative Jim uh, Bridenstine from Oklahoma, General James Conway, another military man. Senator Ted Cruz was there. Uh, Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar. Dugar. Did you just say Jim Bob? Jim Bob and Michelle Dugar. And apparently they and their 19 kids were taking up about a wing of the hotel. Uh, John Fleming, Republican from Louisiana. Uh, Mike Huckabee. Uh, Bishop E.W. Jackson, who uh, we here in Virginia know was running for lieutenant governor and may have single-handedly cost a Republican all the uh, statewide offices. He was Maybe. Truly, okay. truly horrible. Bobby Jendel, who is a biologist, but who yeah, keeps he's pushing. Yeah, like he's totally hardcore. Yeah, uh, creationism. creationism. they got to teach it in school, teaching the controversy that doesn't exist. Uh, Representative Jim Jordan, Republican, of course, of Ohio. All Republicans, all these representatives. Mark Levin of the Mark Levin Show, uh, David Limbaugh, who I never heard of, but his last name's Limbaugh, so <laughs> enough said. He's one of um, the unholy offsprings. Of Lieutenant <laughs> uh, convicted felon, Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North, half Governor Sarah Palin, Rand Paul, who is still a Republican, 
Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council who puts on the uh, uh, Values Voter Summit, Rick Santorum, Todd Starnes, uh, and our local representative Frank Wolf, who some people call a moderate. If you can call a moderate somebody who votes 100% of the time with the uh, radicals on the right. Anyway, this is a list of the, uh, the speakers that were at this thing, and this happens every year. And every year for the last eight years, except uh, I think it rained one year, we we set up a table. You can get rid of that uh, graphic now if you want to. But um, every year we set up a table and we hand out literature and we talk to anybody who will come up. And this year we were there again uh, yesterday. Uh, and the turnout was really, really light this year. And you know, their turnout was light. We had at most at one time we had about five or six people talking to us. Whereas at times in the past we've had 30 people gathered around the table yelling at us and uh, trying to handle those. And so very light turnout. Now just take that as a sign that they are disheartened and we're winning. Now did you just see less foot traffic in general or uh, was it, do you think this could have been a concerted effort on their hand just not to engage you all? I think they're probably spreading the word now not to engage us. Some people did walk by and said welcome back, you know, very cordially. But there's always going to be people, no matter what, who want to come out and fix us. So they come out, they can't help themselves, they'll get involved in debates. And if I can say right up front, uh, American Atheists, like other atheist organizations, our primary uh, focus, our primary purpose is not conversion. We hope to persuade people through reasonable argument that their position is probably wrong, but primarily we're concerned with separation of church and state, and that is where we try to you know, keep the conversation. But you know how these uh, debates go. When you start debating a theist, it's all over the place. It's Bible, it's Constitution, it's history, it's And everything. it's all out of context. Whenever they start losing, yeah. it's like, well, you're, you're spinning, you're twisting my words. It's like, no, we're not twisting your words. We're talking about the Bible. Yeah. You know, I mean, how, if it's the infallible Word of God, how, how much out of context could it be? But, you know, it's like, and, and that's I another that, argument. That, that very argument may be on one of the uh, clips that we're going to show today. Yeah. But, um, uh, but, you know, but that, that's, that's the convention. And what, is it that, what is it that they try to do at this convention, Rick? What is their objective? You know, what's their stated goal? Well, let, let me say this. My belief is that everything mm -hmm. on the right these days is driven by abortion. Everything. And it poisons everything else. And, of course, there is their... Uh, um, how to say it, their allegiance to corporate America, uh, to the 1%, and that is primarily their, their focus. Mm -hmm. But it's like a, a theocratic corporate oligarchy. You know, that's their friends, that's their, their base, the 1%. That's where their money comes from. So, and that's recognizable in the legislation they champion, what they pass, and their policies. But I think at the root of it all, what has poisoned the right in this country is abortion. Well, then I would have to say, I think it makes more sense, and I, and I tend to agree with you, is that we are winning, but also that issue seems to be coming less and less important to other right-wing um, parts. You know, the movement I, seems to be breaking up. I think some people are moving away from it. It, mm -hmm. it does remain a it plank does, yes. of their platform, a constitutional amendment banning all abortions. Um, so, But there are right-wing camps out there that that's just not their cup of tea. Well, so. another, another thing, too, is talking to people out there, and you get such a range of responses, but one thing is those people, the crazy Christians, that's not us. That's those, some of those other mm -hmm. people. And they would deny some of the things, the anti-evolution, the anti-intellectualism, the focus on the 1%, and they try to downplay you know, their, uh, their focus on abortion. I would always, you know, I, I may have to go with you next year. I was working a double shift because the thing I would love to ask these you'd people en, You'd is, enjoy it. We'd I would, probably, I'd have probably get time. some great footage. I, w I would just be like, so you're against abortion. What have you done to ensure that single mothers have access to health care in this country? Right. What have you done to make sure that we're educating uh, children from broken homes? I guarantee you that none of these people would have an answer And they, for that. they were still passing out literature saying uh, Planned Parenthood, 91%, 92% of their activity is abortion, which, which, is, <laughs> which is a flat lie. It is demonstrably false. Yeah. The real number is 3%, but if, if it were 92%, Abortion is legal in this country. It is a right. It is a constitutional right. So well, Like it or not. So like it or not. I say if you don't um, like it, don't get one. My whole attitude on that is if you really don't like it, 
you try to help the person have a choice instead of taking a choice. No better than that. If you don't like it, move to Saudi Arabia. That's what I'm saying. So. Well, I don't know. The bigots might like that because they cut heads off gays over there. It yeah. might fit right in. Oh, interestingly, there was a table down in the uh, sign up area, in the uh, you know sign in area, of uh, seculars. They didn't say atheists, but they were secular pro-lifers down there. They were very clear that they were not. Christians, but they were, uh, you know, pro-life. And I know there are people out there, I know some of those people, I don't get it, but there are people out there, atheists, who agree with the Pope and the Mullahs and Pat Robertson on that one issue. I just don't get it. You know, I, I just, you know, I, and I'm not, I'm not opposed to, to that. I, I mean, I, I can't see where somebody may be uncomfortable with the subject or they don't like it, but the idea of taking a choice from another human being that you don't live with the consequences of taking that choice, they do, is is the part that I have a hard time wrapping my well, head around. Yeah, and there's the, the extreme hypocrisy of it. This party who talks about being the party of freedom, capital mm -hmm. F, freedom. Mm -hmm. Well, except for this one thing, they want women to be returned to barefoot captive breeders. Well, that's what most, I hate to say it, tyrants do, is they claim that their freedoms are being repressed. Yeah. Because what they want to really do is shut down critical arguments to their baloney. Well, and if you're arguing with them, you're attacking their freedom. Yeah, it's, it's persecution when you're persecution. arguing with them. With them, it's uh, uh, their constitutional rights, freedom mm -hmm. of speech. But, you know, people like Rick Santorum are entirely too concerned with people's sexual activity. Mm -hmm. Everybody's. He thinks it is a legitimate area that the government should be in control of in, in the name of freedom apparently. in the name of freedom in the name of freedom free so, willy i mean oh wait yeah. never mind. Well, yeah, don't, don't do that there. Don't there. so um uh, well we got a clip here uh, i think it's labeled uh, rick trolls uh because rick did some trolling this week and we want to share that with our audience and let's go to that clip i heard that God and Jesus, same guy, watch every second of gay porn that there is. Every second. Oh, it's gonna... we're, we're out here in front of the Values Voters Summit in Washington, D.C. Yeah, that those are bushes, but you get you get the <laughs> idea. right George. over there, right on the other side of those bushes are a bunch of uh, Values Voters. Okay, hi. This is Rick Wingrove reporting from uh, Values Voters Summit in Washington D.C. And with me behind the camera is the lovely Tiffany Harding. Hello. We have uh, Christopher Duncan Arroz, or C.J. as we know him from uh, uh, George Mason. What's up? And my lovely wife, Ellen. What up, Daisy? So I can't see either of you. Uh -huh. Sorry. Hey, what's up? Hi. You, a little disappointing so far. Very low turnout. We've uh, had like two minor confrontations is all out here. So nothing really, uh, nothing really dramatic yet. But uh, all the usual suspects are inside. Uh, who's in there today? So let's see who else. Uh, Buddy Smith, Executive Vice President of American Family Association Action. Ed Vitagliano, Director of Research at American Family Association. Uh, we also have Harry Mihit, Senior Litigation Counsel at Liberty Council. Matt Staver, Founder and Chairman at Liberty Council. And Mark Trammell, of the Legal Director and Attorney for Liberty Council. Yeah. Okay, not, nothing real spectacular there, but... Ask me, have I heard these names before? Have you ever heard any of these people before? Never. No. no. I these have. People. This is actually... Um, I'm back, that's it, yeah. Low turnout, uh, a, a lot of big names here, but it's the usual suspects, as I call them. It's, uh, you got your Sarah Palin's, your Sean Hannity's, your uh, Glenn Beck's. Michelle Bachman's uh, star, um, I can't remember her. Ted Cruz was here yesterday. Yeah, but uh, yesterday, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but today should be the big day, and then, no? Is it Friday, the big day? Talk about what we saw when we were inside. Yeah, I uh, see so you uh, managed to get uh, into the conference. Yeah, thanks to our, some scholarship offered by uh, the Students for Life, I was able to uh, get in. And uh, so, yeah, uh, there's a 
like we mentioned before, very few people are inside. Um, there is a career fair if you're looking for a jobs, but only of religious organizations uh, and five of them. It's very few people uh, that are offering jobs in there. Um, too bad there's a any more job creators in there. No. That would be right, more well, useful. I believe if you check your constitution, you'll see the word job creators not in it. Mm. So, nor is the word capitalism, but I digress. Uh, the fact that the turnout is so low right now today tells me that we're winning. They yeah. are disheartened. They're not showing up. They look around at their slate of candidates and they're frankly embarrassed. That's my read on it. Do you know how many Vietnam vets it takes to screw in a light bulb? No. How many? You weren't there, man! <laughs> <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Anyway. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe you included that. Okay. I had to include that, man. There was no way that I was not going to include that. I saw that on Ray Donovan the other night and rolled on the floor for five minutes. Uh, that first guy I talked to, don't know if you can see his t-shirt, it said, Gay Away the Prey. He was, uh, <laughs> Gay Away the he was, Prey. Uh, he is a local atheist and writer uh, named Ron L. Adams, and uh, a gay activist, and a great guy. He always comes out when we're over there. And he was also in the conference, so... He wasn't strictly trolled. He was there uh, with us, more or less. Well, I'm watching that clip, and you know, the thing I found interesting is there's a lot of these names that he was reading off that list that I've never heard of either. No. But they're being led by some of the most right-wing psychopaths, in my opinion, that we do have heard the names of. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess while the numbers or low for this turnout, the part that concerns me is the agenda and the fact that these people are listened to by the other people in Congress and in the Senate and they somehow have some credibility. So it is nice to see that there are atheists out there challenging that. And Well that's kind of the point, not yeah. let them have the floor all to themselves and that's the, what we try to, to show every year is there is an alternative opinion out there and uh, if we don't show up, if we're silent, silence is consent, and not showing up means, you know, it's tacit consent to just keep doing what you're doing. And so I think it's important to always be visible and vocal whenever they are pulling these kind of things. Is it, is it uh, CJ? CJ. CJ. From, uh, from George Mason University, the uh, student group there. I hate to use a biblical term, but it must have felt like Daniel walking into the lion's den for him to go inside that place because I can only imagine the horrors that that place yeah, I think, saw. I, I, think it, I think it probably is intimidating. You know, we also, even though we post it as a meetup on our meetup site, we don't usually get a lot of people that uh, come out, maybe three, four, five ever at most, because I think a lot of people are intimidated by the thought of going into the belly of the beast. Uh, I, I may just be stupid, but that doesn't bother me because, you know, my mom had us in a Southern Baptist church when I was a kid, and I know these people. I know how they are, and I know that it could appear scary, but they're really, um, nobody's going to shoot you in there. You know, nobody's going to. Mm -hmm cause a confrontation that's going to end up on uh, the uh, evening news, you know? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, nobody wants to get arrested. Have, have you ever seen me troll Scientology buildings? Well, no, no, I've heard uh, uh, stories. I've got videos of them, and I've gotten punched in the head twice in one day. Oh, really? So, of course, it may have as much to do with my style it, it of may agitation. Be, maybe it's just you, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's my obnoxious behavior in front of these people. So, But, hey, that's just part of the theatrics of it, so... Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, 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 it takes great courage, but I also think it's it's absolutely vital. You know, you talk about silence as consent. So is not so is not being fully aware of what's going on, mm -hmm. and it is important for people to get inside of these events. It is important for people to report back as to what took place, what is being said, because you can't speak if you're not educated. And right. So kudos to you guys for being out there. Um, I know we got another clip I wanted to show. Um, well, before you do, let me say one thing about Belly of the Beast. Mm -hmm. uh, American Atheist National Convention this year, just past uh, last last Easter, was we held it in Salt Lake City, Utah, which is kind of the Belly of the Beast. Mm, big but, one. But you know, sometimes 
what they say is actually true. The people there were really nice, even the protesters. We were all taking pictures with them and everything, and they were really nice. A little bit crazy, but, you know, really nice. So. Well, it actually reminds me of the guy that we're just about to watch the foot of, uh, footage of, um, Mr. Tea Party Man. Ah, uh, yes. Um, we go to that, and we'll talk about him. Wrong clip. Uh, do you believe that we are a Christian nation? I believe that our country was originally founded by many people who came over here to have it be a Christian. Okay, I'm not talking about colonial America. I'm talking about the United States of America, which was founded upon the Constitution. Do you believe that we are a Christian nation? The Tea Party's in the house. That's He's right. Tea Party's here. here. We Hello. are recording. What's your name? Button Gwinnett. Button Gwinnett. I've first heard sign, of you. First signer, looking, of the, first signer of the Declaration and an ardent Christian. You are awesome. looking good for 250 years old. <laughs> well, I am. I am. <laughs> yeah, matter of fact, I'm known here for my own event. Which is? Which is on Facebook. Okay. Uh, a space book. Or something space like that. <laughs> It's space called space uh, it's called William Temple's assault on Washington D.C. from all directions at once. Okay, and what is the thrust? Well, it's a, a well, it's sort of a it's like Don Quixote. There's a thrust to it. Yes. Yes, we're we're going to parade the rattlesnake flag mm -hmm. in front of uh, the Supreme Court and the Congress, and then we're going uh, in front of the White House on Tuesday and going to huh. parade it for them. Then we're going to ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, and CNN, all their headquarters. They cover uh, all your bases. Right, yeah. we're, we're letting them know that uh, this army of one is here to, uh, to let them know that the election's coming. Mm -hmm. And all those social conservatives like Ted Cruz and Michelle Bachman <laughs> and, uh, and uh, Miss Gabriel, who just spoke, uh, and uh, we're here to uh, retake our constitutional government, which started with the Declaration of Independence, which I signed, yeah. which said we are endowed by our Creator with certain you, you inalienable that, rights. You do know that the Declaration of Independence is not the Constitution, right? Well, no, I'm just saying that what gave you your Constitution was first the Declaration of Independence. It was a Declaration of War. Right, right. Declaration. The government, however, as you understand, is founded on the Constitution, not the Declaration. Well, no, no, no. Both are our founding documents. Okay. As is so, Magna Carta. Okay. Can we go back to Magna Carta? Yeah, we'll go to Magna Carta. Uh, English public, uh, common law. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay. Right. They all, all, all under all Christian, na in. all in Christian nations. But uh, pointedly, purposefully neutral on religion, as in common law, and certainly our Constitution. Well, no, what it say, it did not say that you could not have religion with government. What it said is the government cannot interfere with religion. I, I believe what it says in broad terms is that the government cannot be the purveyor of religion. It cannot favor... Right, it could or, not establish or, in Virginia. Or, it could not yeah. establish in Virginia and the, it cannot establish the, in the United States. The Angl Anglican Church as the official state church, and therefore beat a Baptist uh, and deny him a, a position in government. But it did not say that it was that our rights do not come from our no, creator. Everybody, everybody is entitled to their religion. Everybody, including or their opinions on religion, including atheists, right. will also get free exercise. Right. And the cool thing is, they set up the system where everybody gets to have their religion, and nobody gets to force it on anybody else. That's by force right. Of law. What right. could be fairer so than my that? Talking about Jesus Christ and His forgiving you for all of your sins <laughs> is my freedom of speech. That is the problem. The, the thing. Yes, That's you just my can't freedom. do that in an official That's capacity. That's my freedom of speech. Yes. Jesus Christ died for all men. And as you understand, now, it cannot you, be done in an official capacity. Aren't you celebrating? Aren't you States. celebrating my freedom then? I, I, all of us get freedom. I love that. All right. That's that was really the point. So nobody, nobody gets to jam is, it. So why are you saying anybody is forcing their religion on you? We do believe in separation of church and state, and we do see but movements you know, by these you know people that that, inside that, to impose. The the separation Christian of principles. church and state is not in the Constitution. It absolutely is in the Constitution. No, it's not. It absolutely is, and I'll tell you where, it's in the First Amendment. Yeah, but but if you want to play we that just, game... We just heard this inside, didn't we? Okay, did I, they point I, out I, that... Hey, listen, listen, listen. If you want to think that, 
Well, uh, more than God. thinking, I can back it up. Well, praise God. You know you what's go not in the Constitution? You go ahead and do that and talk in your microphone and put it on video. But you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to exercise my freedom and go say my prayer before I have okay. my lunch. Okay. God bless you. Have yeah, a good one. Okay. You look have awesome, a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have to admit I added the circus music because it was pretty comical. It it is a bit of a circus. But it was also a bit tragic because I really, really, really liked that flag. And he just ruined it for me. Yeah. What that flag needs on it is on a plane. (laughs) Right right on the flag. Snakes on a plane. Snakes on a plane. But anyway, he wasn't much interested in what I had to say at all. I noticed that. uh, For a guy who came up and approached you... He then all of a sudden wanted to remove himself. Also, I don't think that was the real button Gwinnett. Really? Because yeah. he kind of looked yeah. like he was maybe like too. But he, you saw he, he was trying to conflate the Declaration mm. with the Constitution. Well, this is the one area where I might have some agreements with him, which is that the Declaration was a, it was a solidification, a call to action over the ideas that were embodied in the Constitution. It itself... Has, does, is is not ideas described such as the Constitution. The part that just blows my mind is that I, I don't know whether he was speaking in general terms, but he actually was speaking as if Virginia was somehow like... He was trying to make the case, which I've heard mm-hmm. before, that it really only applied, the First Amendment really only applied to certain very specific instances. He was He's dead wrong. And the, and the uh, uh, what is it, 17th Amendment? I forget. I'm not sure. What are you referring to? Like, what's the language? Oh, let me look it up. Okay. I'll look it up while we were talking. But uh, the one that made it apply to the states, mm. uh, separation of church and state, the First Amendment applies to the states. Okay. Just in case that wasn't already clear, which some people apparently didn't think it was clear. But he was, he was making the case that, uh, the, that the perceived separation of church and state is a misunderstanding and really only applied to Virginia. And he's just, just dead wrong on that. But he also, um, he just kind of ran away there at the end. Tried to keep him, but he had to go. He bravely ran away. Yeah. Like Sir Robin. Because freedom. Because of freedom. Freedom. The freedom to bravely run away Mm -hmm. when faced with information, facts. 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 Yeah. It's it's, it's something else. You know, I just, it it really says, it kind of, you know, and there is a way to say this, where he really is kind of a perfect example of that camp. He's a little bit goofy. Mm-hmm. He's, he, you know, he, I mean, you know, some people, you know, it's kind of cute and funny well, or whatever. He's, he's totally committed to the part. I give him that. He's it's committed a great to the costume, part. too. Yes. Um, but that also tells me that he's not living with reality yeah, in, in some sense. ways. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm watching this. And he's like gung ho, you know. He's going to come there and sell you his spiel until he realizes he's outside of his element. But this is a guy that's going to show up and vote. This right. is a guy who you know. We just sit there. We said, well, well, what happens if we don't go inside there and find out what they're teaching in there and what they're what they're sending their message out? He knew. He was like, oh, mm-hmm. so and so just spoke about this, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, you know, and it's just like, hey, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. These people are paying attention. They're, they're refining their attacks on uh, the notion of separation of church and state. Ron Paul, uh, of all people, famously has denied there's any such thing. Again, based on the fact that those words are not in there. And what I was trying to point out to him, to Button Gwinnett, there was that. Uh, if you want to play that game about what words are in and what words are not in the Constitution, the word capitalism is not in the Constitution. Job creator is not in there. Democracy is not a word that's in the Constitution. Yeah. Um, you know, lots of concepts we hold dear. Free market is not in there. But you know what words are in there twice? Mm-hmm. General welfare. No, general welfare is in there. Um, it, it's given in the preamble as one of the, the reasons for the, the creation of the Constitution, yeah. which is the foundation of our government, 
When you take a pledge, you uphold and defend the Constitution. You never uphold and defend the Declaration of Independence. That's true. Um, but it's true because the Declaration of Independence, as I was pointing out, was a call to action. It was a declaration and, of war. And it was not an embodiment of ideas. You know, it, was, it, was, it was effectively... It, 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 it painted the picture. That exactly. enumerated the reasons why we were... Enumerated uh, is a perfect way of saying Revolting that. Yes. against the, uh, the, the empire. Exactly. So, you know, it's one of those deals where he is correct in some capacity, they, they go together, but he's completely wrong that the Declaration of, of Independence in any way, shape, or form is something that you can testify to uh, as far as making law. It, it's just not. And, and if I may diverge again, you just touched on a topic there, the upcoming election. We have an election in November this year that's very important. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to know this. It's almost a joke on the late shows that people don't know there's an election this November. But it's not only an election, it's an important election because this is for the Senate, which means it's for the Supreme Court. And the reason we have a House majority right now is because in 2010, people didn't know there was a midterm election. They didn't come out and vote, except the Republicans. Old, angry, white, Christian men always come out and vote. And if you're a young person, if you're a millennial, you need to get your butt to the polls because if you don't, you're going to be living by angry old white man rules. And which is fine for me and Rick because yeah, we're, we're, we're angry, angry old, old white. Men. white so. so, but uh, I'm more pink. At least maybe that's the way the camera's yeah. making me I'm look. But not so much white as pasty. Yeah. Is Elmer's glue a color? Yeah. <laughs> see my that would be kind of cool if we yeah. made that made that uh, color. But. Um, now, you yeah. also saw part of a third clip there uh, at the front of that. Yeah, we'll go to that. We yeah, to the re that. as our technical director is telling us, the rest of them are screwed. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> we're good, but the rest of y'all are screwed. Yeah. So, we, we, we're, we're running high. this show. <laughs> yeah. So. But um, I just wanted to take a moment and, and again, really kind of talk about him again. Um, about Button Gwinnett? Button Gwinnett there. Um, I find it really interesting that he goes off the Declaration, he goes off the Constitution, and he kind of immerses himself in the language, which is fine because what's in there is important. We use it as atheists to make our arguments about things like separation of church and state. What he doesn't seem to have a grasp of, and what a lot of these people don't seem to have a grasp of, is the real historical context of the people who wrote it. Mm -hmm. A lot of the people that wrote the Constitution, a lot of the people that wrote the Bill of Rights, um, absolutely, they didn't have, I don't think they used the word atheism back then, because I don't really know that it was something that was uh, even existed or was even popular back then. I believe it did, because I believe they were calling Thomas Jefferson an atheist a, an when atheist. he was running for president. Okay. As so, the worst possible insult. As the worst possible insult. Yeah. However, what you really have to do is look at what these guys wrote in the broader scope of things. Mm -hmm. You really have to look at how they behaved and, and what they did in their, in their spare time and what type of uh, events would they endorse. There is absolutely no reason to believe that the majority of founders of this country were rabidly Christian, pushing a Christian agenda. Um, you know what? It, it really skipped the, their mind to print on the money in God we trust because that wasn't yeah. put there till the 50s. Well, plus, if they were Christians, uh, some of that was discussed in the, at the Constitutional Convention. They voted on it. It wasn't included in the Constitution. We went secular. Right. We went full secular. We included not one but two prohibitions against religion. Mm -hmm. Two prohibitions that apply only to religion, not to speech, separate line item in the Constitution. And I'm talking about, of course, the first uh, part of the First Amendment, the uh, uh, Establishment Clause, and the Free Exercise Clause. And then, of course, Article 6 of the Constitution, which prohibits, prohibits religious tests for public office. So those are two prohibitions which apply strictly to religion in, built into the Constitution. And other than that, no other mention of the deity. That's why they're trying to tie the Declaration to it, because they want to make the case ah, that the Creator, creator is, they're really talking about Jesus. But Jesus and God and uh, Christianity are not mentioned in the Constitution. Yeah, and that, that leads me to a really good point, because I've read the Constitution, I've read the Bill of Rights, I, I've read the Federalist Papers, I've read you know, yep. in-depth, like, historical studies, and I have not found the word Jesus anywhere no. in there. And, I've and done these, guys were, these guys 
were really scholarly. Yeah. They didn't get to watch, they didn't get to TiVo football games back in their day. No. They actually like were immersed in their world of politics and somehow Jesus escaped yeah. Like their attention and all this yeah, dialogue. Like they must have forgot. Forgot. No, they talked about it and they decided to go with a fully secular constitution. With Starting a country with a clean sheet of paper, mm -hmm. they said, let's build a country. Everybody's equal under the law regardless of their religion. And the government shall not play the religion game. They will not be the provider of your religion. Yep. There's no no tests, religious tests. There's no no there's no no official uh, religion cannot be official, can be official religion. religion separate, no favoritism, uh, uh, no yep. special rules except, you know, we're seeing some of that rolled we're, back. We're seeing it by horrible. The most radical activist Supreme Court yeah. probably since Dred Scott. And it's worse than just the Supreme Court. I know we were talking before the meeting uh, uh, I would invite our viewers to check out Tony Ortega's blog, The Underground Bunker. He just covered uh, an update uh, over a case in Texas with Scientology where uh, they basically filed an anti-slap motion because they're victims. They're being beaten up by a woman you know, who's abusing the legal process because they sent her sex toys and called her employer and harassed her and tried to get her fired because her husband is an ex-member of Scientology and according to them, the courts have no jurisdiction over what is otherwise a religious dispute. And that is really scary is because not only are, they, and that's something that people who support religion in our government have to think about, which is that, that you can't have it both ways. If you're going to say, "Yeah, there's no this establishment clause," but you know we want to be able to say that our courts don't have any jurisdiction over our churches, then your churches can do anything to anyone in this country. And then you know what you got? You got you got almost have a religion, you know, some oh. type of religious rule in this country that is that that. It precedes the law of the land. It gives them the ability to act with impunity against all of us in the name of religion. And that is sure as heck not what the founders were talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. The founders didn't intend for Hobby Lobby to be able to get a special religious privilege carved out for a corporation. Yeah. That's, uh, that's going to be a nightmare before that gets corrected. And we're already seeing people pushing the limits on that. Uh, Satanists are uh, doing prayers in city councils and I think people are think that's kind of a joke, but when it comes to, uh, and again, I'm always hesitant to say this, but when it's uh, Islam, when they're confronted with Islam wanting an equal share of time in the prayers in these city councils, then, then maybe the brilliance of separation of church and state will become a little more obvious. Yeah, you know, I just, I know we didn't cover it in our news section, but you brought up a really good point, and it ties into our, to our whole discussion here, is there was just a Satanist who gave an invocation down in Florida. And the uh, I think it was the, the head of the city council stormed out, right. enraged. And it's like, yeah. you know, well, you created this mess. Yeah. You want, you want invocations? I dare you to say it's a Christian-only invocation. It's like... You know, the thing with the Muslims, though, is I, I can't tell you how many Christians I've run into, and I'm not speaking for all of them, that would actually prefer to deal with Muslims because they see that as a real, de you know, they're, they're, it's a real religion to them. Mm -hmm. It's the one that's polar opposite. It may be false. Mm -hmm. The thing with, with them, with Satanism, is it is the polar opposite in all possible ways. So I've seen Christians who actually tolerate Muslims over Satanists. Mm -hmm. uh, even if they know, and that's the thing, did you guys not know that this was a joke? And when he gave that invocation, did you, it's like if that idiot councilman who stormed out had stayed and listened, he could have just gone, he could have just said, great, great satire, good job on using your free speech rights. But he decided to be, feel persecuted. Per, feel persecuted and storm out because yeah. he's the head of a city council meeting that is now yeah. cramming Christianity down his constituents' throats. Poor, abused Christian. Yeah, I know. And, you know, one thing we found out in tabling at these types of events is there's a couple of questions that scare them or statements that scare them, like tax the churches. Mm -hmm. They get scared. But there's a question that I ask somebody in the third clip, which is this a good time to play that one? Yeah, we do need to get to it. There, there's got a, there's a question I ask in here that always causes just fear to just, you can see it fear. across their face. But uh, 
for a Christian nation? I believe that our country was originally founded by many people who came over here to have it be a Christian Okay, I'm not talking about colonial America. I'm talking about the United States of America, which was founded upon the Constitution. Do you believe that we are a Christian nation based on the Constitution? I, I, I want to make sure I'm not being trapped here <laughs> before I speak. So I believe that God blesses nations that honor him and that we have been blessed because our laws are founded on the Bible. And let me tell you... No, one, no, wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I want to tell you one thing. Okay. I just spoke with a friend of mine who is from Iraq. He was a Muslim uh, family related to Muhammad, but he wasn't particularly practicing, but he's a Christian now. And he said there was a huge difference when he, because, because where there is no God or Bible in general, in civilizations, like there's not forgiveness and there isn't love. And he said, as when he came here, he would see people that said they were atheists that would talk to him, but they would say things that were loving and caring about other people. And he feels like that, that is because of our base of the love in the Word of God. Okay. And I stand on that. You believe our laws are based on the Bible? I believe that many of them originally were. I don't think that they always are at this point. Do you, do you believe our legal system is based on 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 the Bible. I believe that our that many of our founding fathers wanted their lives were based on that and they wanted to have the Bible be the basis for the foundation of our country and our nation's laws. But didn't they vote on that and that was rejected? No. I mean, we have a secular constitution. Let me ask you one thing. Well, wait, I was, I was, I was, you've been asking me. I was building I towards something here. Yeah, but see, there's a leading that I don't want to go down a path that I'm in trap because I'm not prepared, and you are very prepared to it to address us today. I don't know. Maybe you give okay. me too much credit. Uh, but but so. it's about the but. the Christian nation because they're pushing it in, inside here. You hear it every day. We see it online every day. I know you do. People who say it's a Christian nation ba based on biblical laws. And our I presume laws, many of our laws are founded on Christian biblical principles. I mean, the Bible was taught in our schools. That's how they taught English. That the Bible came across as a foundation with many of the people. So obviously, that's going to be an influence. And so, yes, I believe that a lot of our laws have been um, influenced by the Bible, the Word by, of God, based, based on the Ten Commandments. Based on the Bible. Based on the Ten Commandments. So, the Ten Commandments are in the Bible, but not exclusively. Yeah. Okay. okay. What, do you know um, what, what are the Ten Commandments? The Ten... See, I knew there was going to be some kind of a trap, um, because I don't go by the Ten Commandments because I live more by the New Testament, but... Do you, do you do believe not in the Bible? Adultery. Do Is not... There... I believe in the Bible. Do not... And I know the Bible, but I don't focus on the Ten Commandments. So let me just give them to you. Do not commit adultery. Um, do not take the Lord's name in vain. Do not um, covet. Do not steal. <laughs> uh -huh. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. Um, How about thou shalt have no, have no other gods no before other me? Gods before you know what the me. penalty for that is in the Bible? See, I'm not going down this path. It's, it's, yes, it's death, death, just so you know. Exactly. Yeah. I know so but, do you believe that you atheists should be murdered? You, but, you're not, but you're taking it and you're twisting it. A twisting it? You're it's a commandment it. from the Bible. Let me tell you this. Which if people Muslim, in here follow, reason, claim to follow very closely. Reason, that's right, but but you, but you, God has principles for how you use that. So if you, No, that's God's punishment. It's what He's going to do to you for not believing in Him is kill you or worse for 10 generations of your family. Yeah, but you're kind of taking things out. So I, no, I, I can show you the I, I, I can show you the verse. <laughs> you can show me the verse, but we've got to have like a, a, a year-long Bible we, study. We, we to need really to, to do some interpretation and figure out. Well, the tea party's in the hat. Oh. <laughs> she got to have a year-long Bible study to get to her point. To, to explain her way To explain around. her way, which she, you know, by the way, to covet and adultery are the same parts of, of you know, it's, I shall not covet thy neighbor's wife uh, is the same as adultery. Or their, so, or their car or their uh, right, uh, golf yeah, clubs. But that the, uh, the covet is is direct reference to adultery, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think yeah. you might be mistaken. I, might I believe be. those are separate okay. uh, commandments. Well, Interestingly, all of them... Are lethal up until up until uh, 
false witness, mm -hmm. then there's like a payback penalty for that. And for coveting, no penalty at all. Well, you a stern know, look. You get a stern look from stern look. Jesus if you covet something. That's just stern enough. But that's you. it. That's as bad as it gets. Everything up to that point. Don't believe in God. Uh, don't keep the Sabbath holy. I mean, you know, keep the Sabbath holy. No graven images and uh, uh, using the Lord's name in vain. The first four are all, all death penalties. Also, the next one, uh, honor thy father and thy mother, death penalty for sassy teenagers, I think is what that is. Then don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat, don't commit adultery. All death, death, death. Well, what I find amazing here, Rick, is, and we only got a couple minutes left, but we have a woman who is at Value Vo Values Voters Summit. These people want to make it policy changes in our nation for Christian mm -hmm. values. She has no clue what her Christian values are. Right. She didn't know what the Ten Commandments were, and I knew that because uh, she fell into the trap. And could you see the, the look yeah, on why, her face why when she Why is asking somebody a legitimate question that you should know the answer to if you say you're a Christian and you're pushing Christian agenda, and this guy right here is asking you to define what those Christian values are? Where's the trap? But, in that. Well, you're taking it out of context. You saw her say that. Yeah. I'm taking it out of context. Asking Here's a question. Here's the commandment. Here's hmm. the punishment. Here's the punishment. I don't know what context there is. Yeah. Well, apparently I was out of context. But, uh, she but, didn't put it in context. Yeah. But this is something we see all the time. You know, uh, a survey last year told us that atheists tend to know more about the Bible than Christians. And that was a perfect example of that. She was trapped. She knew it. She knew she'd stepped in it. They're always trapped, And they Rick. fear that uh, they fear that question. They always get that look. Deer in the headlights. They're they're always trapped. The question is to to how what level and how badly they're trapped. But she was also kind of running away from the Ten Commandments when mm -hmm. there are a guarantee there are people in there. And we talked to people that day, said our laws are based on the Ten Commandments. I heard it several times. Well and I hear it every are. time we're at one of these. They things. are. Just like how there's a constitution that's different than the Declaration of Independence, there is the Ten Commandments which actually predates the Bible. You know, they're, they're, they, right. you know, the Jews, I believe, also subscribe to the Ten Commandments. They're, right. you know, it, and so I was forced to point out the Code of Hammurabi, which predated the predates Ten Commandments, that, yes. meaning that destroys the, the mythology that uh, Christianity invented morality. Well, folks, we're coming up on 30 seconds left in the show, and I just wanted to take a moment and thank Rick for going out there. I wanted to thank Tiffany, CJ, Rick's wife, Ellen? for being Ellen out there, uh, participating in this process. Uh, I, I actually really like this show. I think it's great to see interaction between theists and atheists and uh, and add a little circus music in too. Uh -huh. Never never hurts. <laughs> nice touch. <laughs> nice touch. Thank you. But uh, until next week, just uh, we want you guys to make sure, as Rick will say, read your Bibles, <laughs> visit our uh, visit our YouTube and Facebook pages, and we are now on Atheist TV, and we are eventually talking to them about going live streaming, so you can watch it there. It's on Roku. It's on Roku. Roku. Yeah, check us out on Roku. Woohoo!